Iza may be a city that has a leaning tower, but this place has got two of them. <laughs> Hey, what's up? I'm Rafael Di Furia, aka Rafi Diaz Me, and I'm back at it again on another beautiful Friday night. Yes, it's day, but this will be going up Friday night as usual. So, this week I am walking in my new hometown. This little place that we're not quite, this is basically the center, but we're just getting into it a little bit closer now. And this is not a tour of this town, but it's more just to kind of show you guys the new digs so to speak. But I guess before we get too much deeper into the video, because we're just about to get to the center, if you'd like to see more content like this about moving to Italy, Italian dual citizenship, and living life abroad, then please be sure to subscribe with that notification bell turned on. And if you could also give this video a like, I'd really appreciate it, as it does help out the channel. And of course, if you'd like to help out the channel on a monthly basis, you can go to rafaeldifuria.com slash Patreon. Or if you'd like to just help out once, you can go to rafaeldifuria.com slash support. A few months ago, maybe a little bit more than just a few by this point. There will be those of you who will remember the video that I uploaded about taking trains in Italy and that I went to, to Bologna for a business trip. So that was kind of connected to actually coming here. I did have to come here for a couple meetings because as a few of you may realize, there actually is a service provider a company here based in Rovigo. Oh, Rovigo, yes. This is the name of this town. It's called Rovigo. It's a small little city, about 50,000 people. I'm not involved with the Italian citizenship process. I'm not involved with assisting people. This is not what I do. Because of the videos that I make, I have actually become friendly with various service providers and have regular contact with a few of them. But one in particular, I can say I actually became friendly with. And his company, his Italian office is here in Rovigo. And he invited me a while back. Come on, check out the city. Just, we'll have a meeting in person. Um, because I've been doing some media consulting. It's just an external person. I'm not actually a part of their business, but if you go to the website, you may see me on there. I just got home and I realized there's something I forgot to mention to you guys. I had a conversation with the head of this service providing firm, uh, Marco Permuni, and the head of ItalianCitizenshipAssistance.com, and I asked him if there was maybe some sort of special offer that he would be willing to make to you guys. And if you've been thinking about working with a service provider, this is the service provider I would 1 million percent recommend. And I'm mentioning this because one of the most common questions that I get by email, private message, and public message is about what service provider I would recommend. And so for viewers of this video, there is a special offer for new clients only, unfortunately, that until September 30th, when you contact them, if you mention the code Raphael September 2019, then you will get a 10% discount on the services that they offer to you. And when we're talking about services for Italian citizenship, this is something that yes, of course, can cost a bit of money, but when we're talking about 10%, this also can be a significant portion of the service fee. So anyway, here's the rest of the video. Wanted to quickly let you know about that. And so actually the reason why I even was comfortable to get involved with them anyway was because I had been hearing a lot of really positive feedback about how they work and what they do and even getting to see it with my own eyes what they do and how they work. So really at this point in time they're actually the only service providers that I can say I fully could stand behind that I could actually recommend to people. But for right now this is the main little piazza here. I believe it's called Piazza Vittorio Emanuele but I could be wrong. I mean in Italy if you're gonna guess a street name or a, or a piazza name, Vittorio Emanuele seems to be a pretty safe bet. <laughs> it's like Lincoln Street, something like that, <laughs> back in the States. But yeah, it's just a, it's a cute, small little city. So during my brief little stay here, when I was here a little while ago, I actually had no intentions of moving here. I just was here to come for a couple days and that was it. Just a quick, simple little trip to just kind of get away from Alto Adige and just take care of some meetings in person. And while I was here, I ended up finding out that I actually really like this little city. I never thought I would have, and coming here, it was not really on my mind that I would make this place my home, but because I was really becoming unhappy with living in Alto Adige, I had it in the back of my mind, if I went to a place, and if I liked it, maybe I'd consider it. And strangely enough, things just kind of happened to fall in place one after the other. Like, I arrived here, I liked it, it ended up being basically what I was looking for. 
a lot of you guys were guessing places like Bologna, Rome, Torino, um, uh, Verona, and all of these other beautiful places in the country, but places that I actually wouldn't consider because I don't really like cities. I don't like big cities, but I do like having access to cities, and I like being in a place where I can go and do things, but there's not too much. I mean, like, there's stores all over, there's cafes, there's restaurants, really amazing restaurants here. And during the afternoon, things close down. Like right now, it's the middle of the afternoon, just before three o'clock, or maybe just a little after three o'clock. And so most things are closed now, but in the night, the whole town is jumping. There are people out for aperitivi, going to get a drink. There aren't really clubs and stuff here, which is something that I think is great because I'm not so crazy about that kind of scene. But there's stuff going on, so it's not a boring town. And even like, what was it, just last week or maybe the week before, it was a Friday night. I think it was Friday night about a week or two ago. They had this like just biker fest kind of on the main piazza from a local motorcycle club and there was just a ton of motorcycles all around the piazza people were f having fun and it wasn't like an adults only event it was a family event there were kids adults old people young people everything and that's one of the other things that i like about the city is that it is not a sleepy little vacation spot. Well, sleepy is a bad way to maybe put it, but it's not a vacation, a tourist destination. Even a lot of people here in Italy don't realize this place exists, or what people do know that it exists don't have the best opinion of it. I'm not going to say this is the most beautiful city, but I like it. It's got character. Once you get outside of the center, it's not, it doesn't look as nice as the center, but I like it nonetheless. It's, it hits all of the marks that I was really looking for. Over the years, I've never really considered going back to America, but I thought, if I were to go back to America, where would I go and what would I be looking for? And I always thought if I went back, I would think maybe somewhere in the Pacific Northwest, maybe like Ashland, Oregon, because I lived there when I was a kid for a little while, or maybe Portland maybe Seattle, Redmond, these kind of areas, because these are places that I had lived before in America, and I really did like them. But, you know what, there's a park over here. I think I'm gonna go grab a seat at, the, at a bench. Um, but then one of the other places that I've lived in America that I also really liked, for very different reasons, was Boise, Idaho. I know, random as hell, but I liked it there. I liked that it was a place where people lived, it wasn't so much of a tourist destination, and not that Seattle or Redmond, Washington are really tourist destinations, but Ashland for sure was a tourist destination because of their um, Shakespeare festival that they have that goes, what, like 10 months of the year. But one thing that I also really didn't like about Medana, where I had been living previously, was that it was just a big tourist town. That was it. There's nothing else there. There was if you lived there, you were just kind of working in the tourist industry. There was nothing really going on other than that. And so I knew for sure the next place that I lived, I didn't want to be in a touristy area. So I was thinking, maybe if I could find something like Boise, Idaho, that'd be cool. And interestingly enough to me, this kind of has that same feeling of Boise, where it's, it's, just, got, it's just got this feeling like it's kind of starting to be up and coming. There's really some chill spots here and a lot of different things going on. There's a couple of music conservatories here. It's kind of out in the middle of nowhere and a lot of people are thinking, like I said, about Bologna or all of these different cities that maybe I would be moving there, but I wasn't wanting that hustle and bustle of living in a city again. So that's one of the big reasons why I chose it here. It's livable here. People live here, people work here, or they go and they go and commute to another place. Like actually, from here to the Bologna Central Station, if you take a fast train, you can be there in like 39 minutes. If you take a regular fast train, that's not like a Italo or something like that, it'll take you 41 minutes. But if you take a slow train, like up to an hour and a half, but if you take like the Regionale Veloce instead of the Regionale, you can get there like in an hour. So to get there, it's really easy. Or to get to Venice, it's also really easy. That's like 50 minutes, an hour, maybe a little bit more if you take one of the Regionale or Regionale Veloce trains. And so it makes 
it more possible, like I was saying in a previous video, to get out and do more interesting things. Like, I would really love to get out to Reggio Emilia, to Parma, to all of these different places, and to Bologna, get some Bolognese, some pasta Bolognese. Doing this YouTube thing, I thought it would be also cool to be in a place where I could have access to these things. But for me, like, being here, has nothing to do with work, like, because I can, I work from my computer, so I could technically be anywhere. Or the times that I'm not working from a computer, I'm doing production in a place, on location, someplace, wherever that needs to be. So if that's Milan or Bologna or whatever it is, um, let's see. I mean, because I was living in Milano, I wasn't really able to put that time and energy into focusing on video because that wasn't really an area that was conducive, I guess you could say, to that type of business. It wasn't really appropriate for that type of business, and to get to areas where I would be able to work would be more difficult. But now that I'm living here, this is a whole different thing. Also, life in Alto Adige was so much more expensive, like ridiculously. For certain things, it was double, triple, quadruple the price. I mean, even like I was looking at a menu the other day for like a steak here was like 12 to 16 euros, whereas the same thing, the same type of dish in Merano could easily cost 35 ish maybe maybe 28 euros 27 25 and maybe if it's kind of like mid-range sort of place it's like 20 25 but still even for just basic things or pizza like the type of pizza that i like what's it called capricciosa something like that i always forget what it's called until i see it on the menu i think it's called like capricciosa with uh prosciutto crudo carciofi um artichoke hearts and wow uh, what's the other thing i'm losing language here and that pizza in Merano, just a single serving personal pizza, easily 12 to 18 euros. But here, I've been seeing it mostly between, say, like six and nine. I mean, like the way that I compare prices and places is the uh, unofficial pizza index. <laughs> Some people have the, the uh, McDonald's index, but pizza is something that I eat more than McDonald's. Not so in McDonald's. If I need it, I'll get it, but that's if I'm really desperate. Uh, or actually comparing different countries, I think actually uh, the cost of cigarettes. It's a kind of mediocre way of comparing. I don't smoke. It's just something that's available basically everywhere you go. And you can usually find the same brands, um, if not like a, a brand that's owned by another umbrella company. But this is besides the point. In a place like Rovigo, just life is livable. It's not like trying to be anything that it's not. It's people here I've found so far to be really nice, really helpful, really friendly, and just like in Merano, like if you're not from there, people are very cold towards you. They're very, I don't know how to put it exactly, but they're just not the craziest about outsiders. But there were a ton of really friendly and really sweet people there. But I would say if they thought you were not from there, then there was for sure that wall. But here, I have not seen that same kind of uh, behavior towards non-locals. It's not the perfect city, but it's got everything that I'm looking for. I want a place that's livable. I want a place where I can just go out, grab something quick that's cheap and delicious. And there's actually a pizza place not far from here where, well, it's like they do sandwiches and pizzas and it's like kind of street food type stuff. And you can get like a little pizza there for two euros. Or even like there's a, there's also a really big mall here, like really huge place. And they've got a bit of everything. They've got clothing and even a hardware store where you can buy wood. And so for me, that's exciting because I like some of that DIY stuff. I, I'm still thinking about how I want to have my setup for uh, my videos when I'm recording inside. And so maybe I'll take you guys and I'll show you guys going to like a DIY Home Depot type store in Italy and building my uh, setup. But, that's going to be in a little while from now. It's not going to be so soon. You can go and do things here. Rovigo itself is located about 70 kilometers north of Bologna in the region of Veneto. And so it's still pretty central within Italy. So even though I am kind of in the middle of nowhere, I'm not really that far out in nowhere. It's very accessible to get to a lot of different places and a lot of different things. I know I'm repeating myself here, but this is just, this is what I was looking for, basically. A livable city that is not touristy. So I'm very happy and I've been really happy every day since arriving here. Every day I wake up and I'm like, yes! I mean, I just, I don't know, I've, after a while I just kind of, 
don't know how to put it exactly, but I felt almost trapped there in the mountains. Like I thought one of the reasons why I chose to go to Alto Adige was because I spent a lot of my childhood in the Northwest and before moving to Italy, I'd been living in the middle of the desert. And so I was really tired of just the brown and just those tans, all those same colors and sand, it gets everywhere. Insert Star Wars meme here, but <laughs> I could relate to that. <laughs> I really could relate to that. And so I was wanting to be in a place that had lakes and rivers and streams and mountains and greenery. And I thought that's really what I needed to be happy. It was something that I wanted, but I needed a bit more than that. And even though I still, I loved, I loved living in Alto Adige from the kind of outside of it. But for me, what was more important was to live in Italy. I mean, I'd been working on this whole citizenship process for myself for so long. It was almost a shame to feel like I'm not even living in Italy, which was very easy to forget. I would sit around the table with friends and I, and I was just like, you know what, one of these days it'd be nice to take a trip down to Italy because it's just like, you don't feel like you're in Italy there. It just, it doesn't feel like it at all. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just, I was wanting an Italian experience. And this is the real Italy. They speak Italian here. They also speak their own local dialect, so. <laughs> That's the thing. I actually, even to even when they're speaking um, standard Italian, there's an accent here that I have a difficult time understanding. But as time goes on, I'll get more used to it. But really, being here now, especially after 14 years of waiting for citizenship, plus the two years that I was in Alto Adige, so like basically 16 years waiting to get to the real Italy. I'm here. I made it. Church bell. <laughs> actually, that's the comune there. But. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was looking for. I know it is not like the Amalfi Coast or one of these like little villages in Sicily. Again, I needed something that was livable, accessible, and even though I loved going down to Sicily and I loved that experience down there, I didn't feel as though Sicily would be the right place for me to be. I'm more familiar with the north than I am with the south, and at this point in time, I knew that I was really only interested in living in a place that would basically be somewhere in the north. This is kind of north, almost kind of central, but it's still northern Italy. So I guess the cat is out of the bag. And actually when it comes to this whole thing, originally, I think I said in a video, like, I'll, the, the name of the, I'll tell about the place at another point. Originally I was kind of thinking, maybe whatever, like, I, maybe I will say something, but I actually tend to be a private person, believe it or not. Shocking. A guy who makes videos online, who talks about his life and all this kind of stuff is actually private. It's, I know, strange. But I was thinking maybe that I would just move to this place and nobody would really kind of take such an interest like they did. So I'm also really flattered that you guys took an interest in my life, wanting to know where I'm going, what I'm choosing, why I'm choosing. So, I mean, those of you who've been following this journey, I thank you. I, <laughs> thank you for being involved in my life. I, I really didn't know that people were interested in that kind of voice, so this has been interesting for me to see. Um, <laughs> Again, it kind of turned into a game like, whoa, where's Rafi going? Oh, no, I think he went here. Oh, I think he went to my city. No, I think he went to this city. <laughs> People getting debates about it. And even on one video, you guys were saying, all right, let's take bets. <laughs> anyway, so Rovigo. Rovigo, Italy. This is where I live now. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this about moving to Italy, Italian dual citizenship, and living life abroad, please be sure to subscribe with that notification bell turned on. And if you could also give this video a like, I'd really appreciate that as it does help out the channel. And if you'd like to help make more videos possible like this on a monthly basis, you can go to rafaeldicuria.com slash Patreon. Or if you can only help out just once, and really every little bit does make a huge difference in my ability to be able to continue with these videos. If you can only help out just once, you can go to rafaeldicuria.com slash support. And as always, thank you for joining me on another beautiful Friday night. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend and a great week. Look forward to seeing you all next Friday. Have a great one. Later.